Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of Tim Sinks, who I'm sorry couldn't make it today, welcome to Northeast Dental Dental, Delta Dental, and the Workplace Security Seminar. Uh, my name is Valerie Blake, uh, for those who, of you who haven't met me, but I'm pretty sure I've met everybody in the room. So again, thank you for coming. I'd um, like to introduce our presenters this morning. Um, Officer Ryan Howe holds uh, a master's degree in criminal justice law enforcement administration from University of Massachusetts Lowell. He's been with the Concord Police Department for 16 years, first working as a Concord police officer and is now the community officer uh, since September of 2013. I work very closely with Officer Howe with our leadership uh, Greater Concord program, arranging the ride-along programs. Lieutenant John Thomas holds a degree in criminal justice from Northeastern University. He's been with Concord Police Department for over 25 years, starting as a patrolman in 1994. Seen a few changes, Lieutenant? Oh, <laughs> he now serves as a detective sergeant and uh, now he's a lieutenant. In 2015, he was assigned to be the commander of the Community Services Division. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming out. Um, as you, you all know, the world's changing. And unfortunately, this is something we have to talk about, something we don't want to talk about, but we have to talk about it. Um, so the, the new training that's out there right now, there's a lot of different, you go online, you'll see all these different trainings of active shooters. The, the most, the newest and improved, I guess you want to say, is what they call as craze. And it's a civilian response to an active shooter event. So what you're seeing today is the most, the newest, um, this is what Homeland Security is putting out to businesses and to the other different government and municipal associations uh, to put out there to try to train civilians in this. Um, unfortunately, we probably deal with over 20 active shooter incidents where mass shootings occur a year in the United States. It's the most in the world, unfortunately. Um, I think you have all the great minds are trying to figure out why these are happening, and nobody really has a real answer. Everybody says it's gun control, others say it's all mental health. Well, it's probably a little bit of, of everything. So until we can wrap our hands around it, the, the best thing that we can do is to give you some tools to deal with the situation. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to improve your chances of survival. It's going to improve your chances of helping others that are involved in the incident. Um, there's going to be some video here that, that is, some of it's graphic. Um, and you know we try to tone it down but at the same time we don't want to tone it down too much because we want to get the point across that what we're dealing with is life and death so during uh, the presentation please don't hesitate to raise your hand if you have a question um, we will do a question and answer at the end but during it please don't hesitate to uh, chime in if you if you'd like okay turn it over to Ryan good morning, good morning. thank you very much I like to move around a little bit, but you need to you need me right here, right, for the for the microphone. All right, awesome, awesome. I can't sit still. I find that very. I like to move around a little bit. Can everybody hear me? Okay. So, as uh, Lieutenant Thomas says, this is a reality now. Whether it's in school, whether it's a place you work, uh, it's something you have to be aware of. What I don't want you to leave here is to worry. Uh, we're doing it to prepare you, just like prepare for fire drills, just like prepare for anything. You always have to play the what if. If something happens when I'm at work, what am I going to do? Uh, when you leave here, again, don't worry. Oh, if th is this going to happen? It's going to happen. Most likely it's not, but you can't ignore it because it's out there. It's in the media. Uh, we see a lot of mass shootings. We see a lot of school shootings. And there's a lot that we've been trained on that you haven't even heard of because there's only been a death or two. It hasn't been a 14 people killed. It, it doesn't, it's, it's not worthy of media news. Uh, there are some out there that we've learned about that you don't know of. Um, again, we're gonna show you some, some stuff here. There's no way to sugarcoat this. Um, if, by all means, if you are uncomfortable with something that we're showing up here or that we're talking about, please don't, don't hesitate to get up uh, and, and leave the room if it makes you uncomfortable. But um, it's something that we have to show you. It's something that I want you to be aware of. And it, our ultimate goal is to keep you safe and to give you ideas and to prepare you, uh, God forbid something happens like this. So just kind of the outline, we're going to show you kind of your psychology of, of what people do uh, during a 
a high stress incident. Uh, we're going to show you some active shooter events and kind of your, not only your response, but how you are going to react and how we're going to react so you know uh, what's going to happen when we arrive. Um, I always say this, um, I wish they wouldn't do it on the news. Uh, they talk so much about the bad guy or the bad girl in the event. I, I wish they wouldn't. Uh, you know, they talk about Columbine, they talk about Sandy Hook, and everybody seems to know who the bad guy is, but they don't know the victims. I would rather talk about the victims, I would rather hear about their lives, and so we don't name any of them. We may name the incident, but I won't name the bad guy in the incident. Why? Because I don't think they deserve the attention that they're looking to get. So, three stages of disaster response. When under high stress you have denial, because people don't think it's going on. They have deliberation, they get to decide what to do. And then the decisive moment. Okay, what am I gonna do? Hopefully I can train you to take action. Uh, show of hands, denial. Whenever we see the news report of shootings, what do they say the first thing? What do they say, well, I didn't think it was gunfire. What did they say I thought it was? Firecrackers. Firecrackers. Okay, if you're in the hospital and you hear what sounds like firecrackers, say in your mind, all right, it's probably not firecrackers. How many, raise your hand if you've heard firecrackers in the hospital <laughs> or at your work. So say that to yourself. Now, it doesn't mean right now that it's, it's going to be. It possibly is. It may be thunder and lightning. Maybe someone dropped a pallet. We don't know. But if you hear something, okay, make a decision. Okay, is this something I need to move? Uh, deliberation, we're going to teach you how to make a choice and the decisive moment. What we don't want you to do is freeze. We don't want you to just sit there and not do anything. If something bad has happened, we're going to give you some ideas and some decision about what to do. Uh, I like this denial. The first stage of denial is no, it isn't. Uh, we talk about a little bit of social proof. Uh, when you react, people will follow you. For instance, social proof, they, uh, the Macy's, when, everybody, when you're around a building and people are looking up, what do you do? What's everybody else do? Everybody looks up. Why? Because someone's looking up, so I might as well look up. So if you're in a scene and you need to move, People are going to move with you. When people that don't know what to do, they're going to move with you. So deliberation. When something happens, um, you're going to make a decision. So in a high stress situation, um, things are going to happen. You're going to get what's called tunnel vision. Um, it's going to slow down. You're not going to really see everything. What I'm going to teach you is uh, calm yourself. Uh, use calm at breathing. When something bad is happening, I know it's easy to say calm yourself, but take some deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, you want to shift your emotion. And you want to do mental scripting. And mental scripting is your what ifs. You have, as a police officer, when I'm at a scene, I have to think about, okay, what if something happens? What if something happens? I have to be ready for everything. So kind of do that when you go back to your place of employment, at, or if you're going to school, try to think about, all right, what's happening right now? If something bad happened, like right now, like for instance, in this room, if something bad happened right now, what would you do? What would, what, would, what would your first thing? Raise your hand. If something bad happened in this room, like for me, I'd be out this door. Actually, you want me to stay. <laughs> <laughs> you would all leave. But how many would you, would, what? Well, I'd either duck down on the floor or run, depending on run. where the bullets are flying. Right. You'd probably go away from the danger. Yeah. Okay. That's something you have to mental script. And hopefully what we teach you today is you'll, you'll think about this. Okay, I'm back in my office. I'm back wherever I'm working. Um, what am I going to do if something bad happens right now? Yes? Figure out what it is and where it's coming from. Absolutely. You want to, you yeah, what it is. Leave. You want to notify people. You know, you want to just leave. And someone says, hey, what it is. Right. Oh. So that's what I mean by like mental scripting. So a decisive moment. We want you to take action when action is needed. We don't want you to sit. We don't want you to, we use the term hide, and just hope that the bad guy goes away and nothing bad happens. 
All right, let me see. Some active shooter. I'm going to read this, but an active shooter event involves one or more persons engaged in killing or attempting to kill multiple people in an area occupied by multiple unrelated. That's the definition. I think we're all aware of it. We all know about it. Uh, we always see uh, whenever something happens, they have the FBI, they have people talk. I mean, they, they talk these things to death on the news. But there is no profile. Um, there is an Avenger mindset to some crime. We don't know who it is. Maybe it's someone that's just been fired from their job. Uh, maybe it's someone with mental health issues. Maybe it's just someone that picks a soft target. We don't know. There is no, don't try to pick apart. If something is happening or you cease concern with someone of your employees, Make sure you speak up. Um, does your store, does your employee have safe reportings? Um, can you say, you know, hey, I know someone just had a domestic incident. I hope that you report this to your employer uh, to make sure that they are aware that someone's having a problem, mental health issue. Um, but, but you can't profile a shooter. You can't. Oh, where's my video? All right, sorry about that. Uh, let's talk about your response. Uh, everybody who hunts, anybody hunt here? Okay. Uh, has anybody ever heard a gunshot? Has anyone not heard of what a gunshot sound? Yes. Could you stand fairly close to, to it? Microphone? Sorry, right. I it's move around a lot. I didn't hear your question, I'm sorry. Um, has, who has never heard a gunshot before? Everybody's heard one, pretty much? All right. Let's see if this works. Now the casing gives it away. <laughs> uh, that is an actual recording of a gunshot. Uh, if you would heard something like that, I hope you wouldn't say it sounds like firecrackers. Um, especially, I don't, the casing gives away. You probably won't hear the casing drop a little bit. But if you're in work, <laughs> that wasn't a gunshot, by the way. <laughs> uh, if you're in work and you hear something like that, don't deny it. Don't say it's probably just firecrackers. It'll probably just go away. Um, if you hear gunshots, go to your deliberation phase. Make, make a decision. Notify, hey, uh, we need to call the police. We need to move. Uh, notify your other employees. Uh, say, we got we to gotta do something right now. Don't just sit at your desk and say, eh, it's probably nothing. Plain dead. Uh, we saw this at uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, there was a young girl here. She's a speaker here. Um, she played dead and she was shot. Um, we don't recommend playing dead. This is not a good decision. And a lot of people will think to do that by playing dead. We don't want to do this. Why? Because it, it it renders you a victim right here if the bad guy wants to. We've had, we've had shootings where people have shot people that are on the ground. Uh, so we don't recommend that you play dead. We, we recommend, and we're going to teach you the, everybody heard of the run, hide, fight? Has everybody heard that? Um, they've changed it a little bit now to uh, avoid, uh, deny, defend yourself. It all means the same thing. They've just changed the, uh, the uh, literature on it a little bit like that. Uh, playing dead is not an option. We recommend that you do not uh, play dead in the situation. This guy, now the reason they changed the word to deny, avoid, defend yourself, is they felt hide was too passive. And I understand that. It's, it all means the same thing. All right, so this guy, there's an active shooting going on. This guy's hiding behind a desk. What's the problem here? Kirk, no escape. Can't go. Uh, if the bad guy comes around, he sees him behind the desk, he's done. There's nothing he can do. Uh, what else? What are any other problems with this guy? He can't see what's going on. Good. He might be able to hear it, but he doesn't know where the bad guy is. What else? Doesn't have access to anything to protect himself. With. Correct. He's got nothing. That's another one. What else? He needs to escape. He has Yep, no way to escape. Anybody else? I think something? Not much of a plan. Zero. 
zero plan. He is hiding and he is hoping that either we get there or the bad guy kills himself or he leaves, which is more, not probably going to happen. Anybody else? What is he hiding behind? A flimsy desk. Um, bullets can travel through that desk. Uh, someone who's spraying and praying, and those bullets are going to go through the desk. It offers you no protection. Um, we offer cover and concealment. Uh, he's basically concealing himself. He's basically not offering any cover to himself. Um, you know, if this is his only option, I, I highly recommend it. I, I dis, not recommend it, but um, this is what we don't want you to do. We want you to hide. We want you to make a decisive action. We want you to move. So again, I, this is the run-hide fight. Avoid means to run. Deny is to hide. Defend is defend. Defend is your last, you know, and we'll talk about it, but defend is what I want you to do where basically... Our rule number one is to avoid it. Rule number two is deny, and rule number three is defend. If you can always refer back to rule number one, do it. So uh, let me show you a little video here. Um, is it too loud? How do I? Well, let me know if it's too loud. Uh, this is a school board meeting uh, where a man comes. He basically is upset at the school board, and I just want to watch a reaction, and you can talk about it. technology to notice it's on the uh, chart that you have there and it's part of the plan that we have that the workshop we're going to have following this meeting but uh, this will be the first step in that whole process I have a motion oh, uh, I to everybody in this room behind that counter hit the road Hey, sir. John, John, just let him talk. He's, he's, he's talking. John, go ahead. Uh, that first thing where she is defending herself, don't do that. Um, she's extremely lucky that guy didn't uh, shoot her right now. The, uh... Get out. You see, uh, our benefits have run out. We're broke. You see what I'm saying? Please explain to us, sir. Please explain to us. I'm not sure she where, she, to where she worked. We'll talk to you. One of the... Hey, listen, listen to me. Look, look, here. I'm a good guy. I've got a lot with my wife and family. I don't need to die. In the school board here, we just try to do what's best for children. I've been in the system. I was a principal for 11 and a half years. I've got a great wife. I've been married to her 40 years. I've got two great boys. But see, here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want anybody to, listen, just listen to me for a minute. I don't want anybody to get hurt, and I, I've got a feeling that what you want is the cops to come in and kill you because you're, you're mad, because you see you're going to die in that. But why? If this, is, this isn't worth it. This is a problem. Please don't. Please don't. Please. I'm going to kill you. What you understand? 
So uh, a little graphic, but we talked about a void. Comments about that? What they would have done differently or? It's kind of confrontational. I mean, the, the board. Yeah. It's like I'm arguing with them about it, but maybe that's. Yeah, did they have opportunities to leave? Yeah. I, and granted, I'm not Monday morning quarterback because I, I was not put in the situation. Um, was there, a, from what we could see, was there an area where they could leave? A couple of them from the door, the door that they had right. left. Right. I mean, if they moved, uh, you know, they just kind of sat there. And again, they, I know they were under stress. They thought they could talk this guy down. Uh, but there was an open door there. Um, you know, I don't know what would have happened differently. I'm glad no one was uh, seriously uh, injured or killed here. But, you know, avoiding the situation, what what do you think you could have done to avoid it? What would you have done if you're in that? If you're in the seat, what would what would one of you have done? Do you think you would have sat there? What I would hope is that you would have got up and moved. Um, you can't negotiate with the someone. Again, I don't want to money more to quarterback, but get up, move, avoid the situation. If they all moved, now the bad guy's got a decision what he what he needs to do. Um, so that's my first thing. If, if you, the rule number one is to avoid the situation. This is the run part. That's what surprised me too about the audience. You told them to leave and they took such a long time. I know. Time. Oh, that's another thing too. Uh, what did they grab? They all grabbed yeah, their purses, purses and their bag. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. You can always come back. Um, <laughs> but why? Because that's the social norm. When you leave a room, you're supposed to take all of your stuff and you leave. You fall back because they're not thinking. They're under stress now. Um, you need to move and fast. Um, the woman that's tried to slap the gun out of hand, don't do that. That is your last option. That is you're cornered in a room and that's when you go at it. And uh, fortunately, he didn't kill her. And what about the other one that just kept coming after her saying, can I help her? Can I help her? Like, yeah, I, I just... Get out. Get, move, get fast, and move. Leave all your things behind. Um, know your, yes? So, if I heard the video correctly, the, the shooter gives the instructions for the guys in the front to stay. Yes. And then tells the audience to leave. To leave, yep. In that, in that situation, if those guys also ran for the door, how do you know he's not going to chase after everybody and shoot everybody? You don't. You don't. So is it better, so I'm hearing you say it's better for, for them to run for it instead of following instructions? Yep, because they're basically sitting ducks right there. Lieutenant, do you have any other thing? Yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously, it's, it's, it's a game day decision you have to make. Um, we're giving you, the, they, they were going to get shot either way. So would you rather just sit and be a victim, or would you try to give yourself a chance? And that's, that's really what we're trying to get across to you is that, um, we're trying to give you every second counts. So he's obviously can't shoot everybody. If everybody got to try to run out, the chance of survival raises a little bit than just sitting there. Now, luckily, he, he missed everybody he shot at. <laughs> he was he, he was pretty close. And uh, so that, that that's what we're that's the, the point he's trying to get. That sitting there instead of being the victim, try to take it in your own hands. You know, be the leader of your own destiny. Really. Taking instructions not the right thing to do. Well, like we said, it, it's really it's a game time decision. You really have to make that decision. Exactly. You have to you have to look at the situation and decide. If I just sit here, the chances of me being shot because he's already said he's not leaving here alive. So the chance of me just sitting here. And, and the only reason I'm asking is I'm in HR, so I, I have to think about explaining this to someone. And you know, people do what they see on TV and in, in the movie. Movies, what he says, do what he says. And so it's good for us to know to not do that. Right. Yeah. It's, it's and like I said, it's a game time decision. You have to make that decision. Um, we're showing you different options. Um, but, I mean, I wouldn't stand there. I would right. try to do something. I mean, I'd try to talk to him like they did, but at some point you got to make a decision. And we talk about, like, social norms. And who knows if two people stood up and said, let's move. You know, would others and follow? You know, would others follow? So I don't know, but you would think that maybe if someone says, you know, go, let's go, let's go, that more people would have would have taken off. So, yep. Aren't you taking more 
more control back by creating that chaos and not listening to him and getting it moving by throwing him off his because he's expecting to have total control mm -hmm. over that group and if you got up and left he's just lost all of his his games not working the way he thought it was because I mean that's I've had to use it in the past so I mean that seemed to work out well because it didn't mm -hmm. go as he planned and it's you know I don't know this seems like you're taking some control back by not following his yeah that's a very good point very yep good point. now I don't know if you, they didn't show it on the video but you heard a spraying Did you hear that spraying that was him spray painting the circle and the V on the wall so that took him a while to do that. I don't know if you saw the red, there was a red red circle with a V. He was spraying, and they were just standing there watching him. And the whole time, he, had, he actually had the gun in his hand while he was spraying. So they would just watch him. So there, there was another opportunity for them to get up and get out. You know? I think there was another exit, too, which you, off camera, down to like the lower left. Um, I, I, I don't know, but I, I've heard. I think that's where, with the, uh, the, when the shooting started, I believe there was either campus security or another officer that came in and engaged him. Um, so there was another exit there. Did you have a question? Oh, I was wondering what took, I mean, he, he was shot. Was that person in the room? I believe so. I think he came in through the other exit. Um, I, my understanding is he, he took a round, and then you see him firing in the air, and then at some point he... Um, I've been told that he shoots himself, which, for whatever reason, most, you know, we're trained to come in. We don't wait. We don't, you know, call them by it. Uh, most of these active shooters, they do end up taking their own lives. Um, and to be honest with you, that's fine uh, because the people, uh, it's ended. And I don't mean rude. I mean, like, I'm, I'm glad the guy's dead. I mean, no innocent people are going to be killed anymore. And just to clarify... The, the officer that he was talking to early was unarmed. When he's engaged by fire, that those are the that actual police are actually responding. That was my to the scene. I, didn't no, know he, I didn't know if he was sitting there armed and did nothing. No, no, he was not right. armed. He, they actually tell you, they, they tell him, listen, he's not armed, don't, you know, he doesn't pose a threat to you. But yeah, the officers are actually the ones who put him, you know, put him down. Thank you. Um, so leave as soon as possible. Know your exits. Uh, when you're in a room, know, okay, there's an exit there, and there's an exit there. Uh, know where they are. Whenever you're in a room, when you, when you go out, when you're in a theater, know that you don't have to go in because normally people go in the same way they come out. Uh, know in a theater, at the bottom, usually by this, there's two other exits. Uh, if you have to punch through drywall, know that that's an option. It's, your, it's not the you know, best option. Windows, windows can break if you have to get out. And when we say call 911, we mean call 911 when you are safe. Wait till you are safe. Guaranteed if there is an incident, we're gonna be getting a lot of 911 calls. But when you are safe, I mean, if you leave this building and you run, keep going. Know once you're in a safe location to then call 911. Everybody has a phone? Um, yes? Isn't it also important to not assume that other people are calling 911? You said that there'll be a lot of calls, but it's still- Don't worry, don't worry about that. Um, because we're gonna, we know we're gonna be inundated with 911 calls. Um, but you're right. Don't as, don't assume anything, but don't worry. I, I need to call 911 now. No, you need to get yourself to a safe location, and then call 911. Again, we talked about it. Consider second day exit. This is from Columbine, getting the kids out through the window. So when I mean deny, this is the hide phase that they've changed. Uh, well, we ask if you're in a room, lock the door, turn the lights out. A lot of people forget to turn their cell phones off or at least on to vibrate because remember, you can still hear the vibrate. Uh, keep out of sight. Generally, when someone locks the door, we want people against the wall. Again, it's not ideal because it's drywall, but um, you know, if you get yourself in that wall with concrete, lie against the wall that's facing the door that if you can't pull down the window and the bad guy looks in and looks at the room he probably can't see you because you're at that far angle that's what we want you to do and when i mean deny if you have to barricade the door desks uh whatever everything you can put in front of your door barrels desks uh, whatever i'm just trying to think of anything you can have a denial even if you can't barricade the door and the if someone is going to get in Put as much obstacles in that way to basically give yourself some time and distance. Because that's what we're all looking for, is time and distance. Because you know we're coming, the bad guy knows we're coming, 
Um, if we can create more time and more distance, less people will get hurt, and it's quicker for us to get there and save as many people as we can. Um, different ways to barricade, heavier is better, more is better. Uh, door stops, door stops work great on the inside of a door, especially for a door that opens inside. Uh, I love this picture, she stacks up everything. Um, again, there are only chairs and tables, but it's gonna be difficult for someone to actually enter that room, even if they can unlock the door. Um, that's another thing too, a lot of schools and they have, we deal with fire, you know, fire codes, but do you have locks on the inside of your doors, wherever you're working? or the schools ask. You know, a lot of people say, well, we do have locks, but we gotta reach out and unlock the door from the outside. And it's fine and dandy, but you put that under stress, it's gonna be very difficult for someone to find the key and reach in and lock the door. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this one. I don't know if anybody has any ropes or tactical cinches. Um, <laughs> but I just thought it's a good idea though. When you think about it, if you have a rope, a bungee cord, um, if you have to do this to hold it, um, I like it. It's a good idea. So whatever you can think about. Um, yes. Uh, belt is a good idea. Belt. And if you got like an uh, automatic door closer. Yes. If you take the belt and wrap it around that, and tighten it around. It Great. Closer. Yeah. It all it all counts. Anything you can think of, anything you know of to bring back to your organization, uh, let them know. Yes. Can you repeat what he said? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, option is a belt. You can use a belt to put around the a handle. Belt. Or if you have a uh, automatic door closure, if you wrap the belt around the outside of that, up against the uh, door frame or the door itself, and tighten that down around and tie it up, it can actually help keep the door closed if you don't have to lock in the door. Thank you. Something like this. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, rule number three, defend yourself. This is your last option. This is, I can't run. I can't hide. I'm sorry, I can't uh, deny access. Uh, this is your last option. This is the uh, flight 93. Uh, the guys in the flight can't run because they're on a plane. Uh, they can't hide because they're on a plane. They had to defend themselves. They knew they were probably gonna crash the plane. And uh, I hope I'm not speaking if anybody had any relatives, but this is the best example I can give. These guys had to defend themselves. This is, the bad guy has now entered the room, all the doors are locked, there are no windows, and this is where you need to defend yourself. And when I say defend yourself, I mean defend yourself. It doesn't have to be a fair fight. Pull, grab, bite, punch, uh, fire extinguishers, staplers. If you throw a stapler at someone and hit them in the head, it's gonna hurt. Uh, do what you need to be necessary. Don't worry about, I'm gonna violate policy, I'm gonna <laughs> hurt someone. You laugh, but some people think that people under stress are like, ah, what can I do? Go after him. And when I say defend yourself, I mean defend yourself. Put that person down and do whatever you need. Um, if you have a bunch of people in the room, uh, be a motivator. Because a lot of people won't be able to stand up and, and do something. So find the people in the room that you know are gonna stand up. Um, and again, one person stands up, the other person's gonna stand up, speak to them, tell them what you're gonna do. Hey, this guy's coming in the room, we are gonna get him, we are gonna go home, we are gonna see our family, we're gonna have a good mindset, and we're gonna attack this guy, and we're gonna go home. Uh, this gentleman here, Lieutenant Brian Murphy, um, this is what he said, he was in a uh, gunfight, I think he can just whisper now, and uh, he was in a, a shootout at a active shooter, I think six people were killed. Uh, he was shot uh, in the neck, um, but his mindset, and they teach us in, in police, you gotta have a mindset. And I'll repeat this, I'm not going out in a parking lot. I'm not going out like this. I'm not gonna let my wife down. I'm not gonna let my daughter down. I'm not letting my stepkids down. Um, this is a great, they talk about the, the warrior mindset. And as a police officer, if you, you may be shot, you may be injured in eight, but you know that if you're shot, you're not down. You, and you need to defend yourself, you go until you can't go anymore. Um, that mindset will greatly help you um, to know that I'm gonna win, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna see my family. Um, it, it seems very drastic that I'm telling you this, but it helps. Uh, they teach it in police work, they should teach, and we're teaching everybody now. Have that worry mindset that you're gonna win and you're gonna go home. Always remember that you are not helpless in these incidents and what you do matters. 
what you do matters to your colleagues, what you matters to everybody. Um, just briefly, um, I, I kind of like this. It just gives you kind of a quick rundown. So when a tax starts, the primary act, what should you do? Run. Run. All right. So you avoid. Oops, sorry. Uh, oh my God, this is awful. Sorry. <laughs> it's not working there. Um, basically, um, sorry about this. It gets screwed up. It's supposed to stay highlighted. Uh, basically, if you, if you deny, basically you have to hide out. If there's other exits, go back to phase uh, one. Avoid. And then obviously you got to defend yourself. Sorry about this. It's supposed to stay highlighted. So our response, when police arrive, we're not going to know what's going on. It's going to be chaotic. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be the worst scene that we respond to. Um, we're not going to know who the bad guy is or bad guys or bad girls are because they don't wear shirts that say, I am the shooter. I am the bad guy. Uh, be careful. I don't know what your policy is about being armed. And because if we go to a scene and you're trying to defend yourself and you have a gun, um, best to put that gun down because we're not going to know who the bad guy is. Uh, we may think you are the bad guy. Um, we're going to ask as much information as possible. But what, what, this is our goal. We want to stop the killing. When we respond to an active shooter scene, we enter the building and we are to stop the killing. We are to put the bad guy down or do whatever means necessary. <coughs> that means stepping over people that are injured, stepping over children that are injured, stepping over the elderly that are injured. Um, that is our motivation. Once we have the scene contained, that's when we stop the dying. That's when we protect the people, get the fire department in, and we evacuate the area. So it may seem cold if you're in this situation, but we are not there to help people that are injured. Our, our first goal, our number one priority, is to uh, stop the killing. Can I stop you for a second? Yes. See, a lot of people think that's callous. They're like, well, well why, why isn't the officer stopping and helping? Well, we're not trained in, in we're trained in very bare minimum first aid response. So our goal is to put the shooter down so we can get the real medical folks in and supply the medical need that these folks are going to need because you're going to see some, some serious injuries. You're going to see gunshot wounds. Um, so that's our goal. Our mission is to go in and get the bad guy and get the, the real medical people in there to help those. Yeah. Um, I, I think our training is training a little bit different. We're trying to get some hot zones and warm zones, but we haven't been fully trained on that. But, I mean, that's our goal is to stop the bad guy. So when we arrive, if you're running out, if you're in there, listen to us. Follow your commands. You may be handcuffed. We don't know what's going on. If we enter a room and the bad guy's there, we put the bad guy out, don't be, we may handcuff everybody because we don't know what's going on. Or we may say, listen, move, move, move. Keep your hands up. Make sure we can see your palms. Uh, or don't move when we tell you. Listen to what we tell you to do. We may tell you to hide out. We may pass you in your room. You may be stuck in the room. We may say, all right, stay there. Keep the door locked. And we may move because maybe we hear the gunshots and all other. Just so make sure you listen to what we tell you to do. Um, again, real quick, medical, there's going to be a delay. We know there's people who need help. Um, Again, this goes into more of a type of training we're, we've changed to. Um, go back to your agencies. I hope you have uh, EAPs um, because you're going to have some mental trauma, physical trauma, um, and hope that you, we always put this in here. Develop a critical incident stress management plan. Uh, go back to your agency. Make sure they have this possible. Make sure they have policies on active shooters and make sure they have policies on what to do if you've been involved in this incident. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Can you say a little bit more what's in those policies? I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to my lieutenant here. Policies on did you clarify the what? <coughs> what did you call it as? Uh, like a EAP or like a boy assistance plan? Yeah, okay. What's what's in those policies? Well I think it's up to each company, individual business. You know, like we have our own set policy. You know, if somebody's if as, as a supervisor or human resource, you know that you have an employee that's having some sort of a mental health issue or some sort of situation that, that's occurring at home that's affecting their work. You can recommend them to see some sort of an emergency plan. Um, like we, we have a specific policy, so it's really up to 
you have a business or a company to come up with their own. Mm -hmm. uh, just something to think about because it, it, if you are involved in one of these traumatic events, it will, you'll have the post-traumatic stress afterwards. I mean, it, it, it's a life altering event. Cool. Um, again, I'm gonna show you a video, see if I can get it started. Um, this is still a good video, it's a little graphic, so I'm glad everybody's still here. Um, this is the run, hide, fight. Again, we use avoid, deny, defend. Um, just kind of a video of just a whole active shooter scene. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, Life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight. Act with aggression. 
Improvise weapons. Disarm him. And commit to taking the shooter down. No matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Questions on the video? Some people came up with Thing. Should they have just been moved further away from That's what came up. Um, so that always comes up, like why are they hiding behind a dump? I don't know how far. I know they were just doing it for the video, but I would get away as far as you can go to a, to a safe, safe location. Maybe they just thought, uh, that question came up, why are they going up the stairs? <laughs> um, but but well, maybe that's the only place they can go. I don't know. Um, but I would get as far away as possible to a, a, to a, a safe, Location. Um, I didn't know if they thought because the wall was there. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> Again, it, each, I can't give you an answer because each business, each organization, school, everything's different. Um, but I would keep going until you feel that you're safe before you call 911. Um, I'm actually using that video to train yep. our uh, group. I already <coughs> ran it once, uh, but it was on the FBI website, but they pulled it off, or at least, and then. But you can still the, get it on YouTube. Yeah, they they are uh, this this we we actually looked it up yeah. to try. There are, there are a ton yeah. that you can look on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, they're Los all Angeles they're all pretty good. One. Yeah, yeah LA's like got one. County. Yeah. LA County. Yeah. Factory. And, you know. I like that one because it gets to the point. There's another one that they also have the avoid. Uh, it's ten minutes long. Yeah. It's a little bit long, but on the same token, it has some. It's a little more graphic, but it puts home to the point that this is this is. This is reality. This is how it is. So, there are we uh, we looked uh, for a, there are a ton of other <laughs> training videos that you don't have to show this one. You can show right. anyone as long as it's showing you kind of what to do, the three phases. Yes. What about texting nine one one? Texting. Is it available yet for us? For us? Yes, it's not no, available yet. So, so I don't know about um, enhanced one one. It may go through. May not. I don't know. Does it, see, that one does. See, a lot of people think that one comes to us. It does not come to us. It goes to the state. And I do not know if they, they are saying that. That's a good question. I mean, I like the idea if you're hiding in a room. I well, mean, I think it's... Yeah, they, I mean, there's someone who's not able to speak. Right. You know. Yes? Um, is there any way that we can Our police department said don't text. Um, we're in a rural area. Yep. So... They said call, but agreed if you're hiding and you can't use your phone any other way. Yeah, yeah. But remember, everything's recorded. If you call 911, you can't say anything. We might be able to also hear stuff in the background. Um, and then we can also ping cell phones to find out the locations of where it is. And, uh, you know, it also helps us because everything is recorded too. These, these are some of the things you want to think about, though. If you are if you are in a rural area, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have an action plan, and that's kind of the purpose of this whole thing, is for you to think. So, everybody in here has a fire alarm plan, right? You have a fire alarm that goes off in the building. Everybody has a plan. You you, you go out a certain way. You you leave the building a certain way, and you all meet up in a certain area, right? I mean, 90% of us have those plans. This we want you to treat just like uh, Officer House said at the beginning. We want you to tr have a plan. You, you, you got to think outside the box. You want to have a plan 
set aside for your employees, for yourself, to know what, what do we do. So when this does happen, you somewhat have some, some sort of an idea how you're going to react to it. Um, they, and speaking of firearm, they do not recommend people pull the fire alarm because during an active shooter event, if you need to hide and you're under stress, if you pull the fire alarm, general, everybody's going to be leaving. And that's what we don't want. Uh, now, granted, it may be pulled, the bad guy may pull it, but we don't recommend uh, for the people working there is to pull fire alarms uh, during an active shooter event. Because it, it screws up, I, I think it just screws up everybody. You would think it would cause more stress, people would think there's a fire alarm. Correct. Right. And you're going to react like the way you're reacting to a fire alarm. Mm -hmm. That's not what we want. They don't know that it's an active shooter, they'll run right into it. Correct. Correct. Um, does your business, or do, do you have um, announcements? Do you have someone, do you have a PA system? So you're aware that you can tell people, hey, there's an actor shooter, actor shooter. Uh, people use code words, people use all, all different things like this. I prefer it, active shooter. This is not a drill or something like that. Uh, the way to notify people, because you're gonna, because your business may be huge. You may not know that there's something going on at the far end of the corner. Uh, we like some sort of PA system or some sort of notification phone system that you can use to let everybody know that this is happening. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, well,